The plastic that we're capturing is a wide range of mix of different polymers, basically different chemical compositions. And the challenge is not in how do you recycle it, but how do you sort it? Every minute, the equivalent of one full garbage truck of plastic trash is dumped in the sea. That's 1,440 trucks like this every 24 hours, 8 billion kilos per year. 80% of those plastics come directly from inland areas, washed into the sea by rivers and streams. Engineers in Australia and Amsterdam decided the problem was so bad, there was only one thing to do. Have a beer and find a solution. I was studying environmental uh, engineering and we were visiting a wastewater treatment plant and at some point they aerate the wastewater to uh, jumpstart certain uh, bacterial processes and it was basically this big whirlpool of air bubbles but the plastic was collecting in one corner and that was the initial spark for me to kind of say huh makes sense can't I use that in a more directed way and then I found uh, out that three young women from the Netherlands had been working basically on the exact same idea. And for them, it was actually in an evening at a bar that the bubbles in the beer were the, uh, the spark for the idea to say, maybe we can use air bubbles to catch plastic. So bubbles in a beer glass inspired the imagination of Francis Zoet, Saskia Studer and Anne-Marie Evelines. And it was the bubbles used for oxygenating a wastewater plant that was the spark for Philip Airhorn. But how can bubbles clean up the plastic polluting our waterways? The technology of a bubble curtain has been around since the 1930s, actually. And it has been used to stop saltwater intrusion and stopping oil spills and protecting, for example, uh, the gates of locks from big debris. But then no one really thought about what they're doing, so they just placed a lot of tubing or diffuser heads to create a lot of air bubbles and then to just push it away and keep it away. After initial interest from the National Water Authority in the Netherlands, they were able to go into a lab to perfect the system. We just took that basically existing technology and looked at how can we specifically apply it to plastics and then make sure we're energy efficient and non-intrusive for the ecology. And then we used those results to upscale to a large open water pilot. So that test showed that we could capture on average 86% of the test material. We were really surprised uh, by the results and that was the moment we kick-started this uh, social enterprise. This success led to the first operational bubble barrier being built in Amsterdam at the end of 2019. The site was chosen as a significant amount of plastic waste passes through the canal systems, making its way from the city to the North Sea. What's actually happening with these bubbles? If we have uh, a glass of beer, of course, the, the bubbles are kind of like all over the place, uh, forming randomly, and we do it a lot more directed. So we have a single line of air bubbles, and these arise from a tube. It's a perforated tube. And that tube we position diagonally in the river. So the effect is that the rising air bubbles create an upwards water stream. And this is taking up the plastic, which is suspended and under the water surface to the surface. And then together with the natural flow of the river, we'll push it then to the side and into the catchment system where we can retain and then remove the plastic trash. The bubble curtain's position at the bottom of the river allows it to catch any plastic object over two centimetre in size that's either underwater or floating. Are there any implications for wildlife? By using air bubbles, uh, for us, the great thing is that we can allow fish and wildlife to still pass and use the river as it's intended to be, as well as ship traffic for commercial activities, as well as recreational ship traffic. So for us, that's really what we're proud of, that we found a way to stop plastic pollution in its tracks before it can even reach the oceans. But we don't have to kind of like, you know, be too intrusive and screen everything out of the water so we can let the ecosystem be as it is. And additionally, uh, in a lot of these places where we have high plastic pollution, a lot of times other pollution comes alongside and oxygen 
is often missing in these rivers and uh, oxygen is very important for fish and a lot of other wildlife. Okay, so you're actually helping ecosystems with these bubbles. Yeah, exactly. So apart from the fact that we're catching plastics, we have a positive side effect that we can increase the, the levels of oxygen, which can be a boost and a support for the, for the local ecosystem. The Great Bubble Barrier operates 24-7, with the local authority collecting the rubbish three times per week. And what happens to the waste plastic next is also important to the Great Bubble Barrier team. I think when it comes to the plastic topic, a lot of people might still think plastic can just be recycled, or plastic is just plastic. The reality is that the plastic that we're capturing is a wide range, of mix of different polymers basically, different chemical compositions. And the challenge is not in how do you recycle it, but how do you sort it? How can you identify the different plastic types in your catch and then sort it effectively? And then you only get to the recycling. And that's where also our current recycling problem is kind of at at the moment. To meet this challenge, the Great Bubble Barrier team is also working hard to find cost-effective ways of sorting the plastic they collect so that it can be reused rather than end up in landfill. New methods of recycling plastic are also being developed that could be useful for the team. Proof fuel, which is a residue from the car recycling, which is almost everything that you mix together. It's All the nasty really, stuff. This is really nasty. It's like, <laughs> no one wants this one. In February 2020, Razor's Emma Keeling met a team at Sweden's Chalmers University who have built a test plant that allows mixed plastics to be recycled without sorting. We're going to focus on capturing the plastics. Um, the processing of the plastic for us is still very important and it's something that we have also looked at and we want to make sure that if we're capturing plastics, we're not just you know, moving the problem to another place. The goal is not to provide, basically, a waste infrastructure to incentivize throwing a plastic into the river in the first place, you know, because the bubble barrier is just going to clean it up again. The success of this first bubble barrier shows how simple but innovative technology can stop plastic entering our seas and could be used in rivers around the world. What does the future hold for your technology? It makes sense for us and for our size to first, you know, reach out into the neighboring countries and kind of like spread into the European market. But our ambition is definitely to make uh, steps towards Asia, specifically Southeast Asia, and then to hopefully deploy the system uh, worldwide. Um, but for now, Europe, uh, and we're looking at 2022, 2023 uh, to, be, uh, to be hopefully launching our first system in, uh, in Asia. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and hit the bell button below for notifications.